SMT Nation, we back. We've got a video for you here today. One thing to cover about T-Mobile and the other on Verizon. Let's start first with the T-Mobile story. Fierce Wireless. Links are in the description for both stories, actually. Uh, for your reference. All right, both dated from today, August 15th, the time of this recording. All right, so T-Mobile taps Edge Compute for 5G concert demo. Uh, this would indicate that they've got a 5G use case. Let's see what this is about, if it's exciting. All right, so T-Mobile recently tapped into the edge computing power of 5G to pull off an impressive concert. All right, cool. That's an interesting use case. Uh, this was for T-Mobile employees at the Bellevue headquarters. Uh, T-Mobile EVP and Advanced and Emerging Technologies' John Saw explained how it all went down. For those of you that don't know who John Saw is, he would be the network guy from the Sprint slash Clearwire days. I'll explain why that's important here. Working with San Francisco-based Mixalo, a graduate of T-Mobile's 5G Open Innovation Lab, T-Mobile hosted a concert where the audience listened to the music from Mixalo's soundboard in real time through earbuds. All right, so um, this type of uh, use case with 5G, kind of actually what 5G is made for, uh, the, the, you need ultra low latency for this. All right, let's see. A quote here from John Saw. That sounds fairly simple, but here's where it gets interesting. The challenge with sending audio to people in the audience is that they are sitting in front of big speakers sending sound waves at 1,000 feet per second or faster. That means if you're 50 feet from the speaker, your phone has to get the audio in less than 50 milliseconds. I just want to let you guys know, um, 50 millisecond latency, not all that impressive. I mean, we've got LT networks, you know, doing 17 milliseconds and... 15 milliseconds and 25 milliseconds today, last year. So this is uh, not really a feat in, in and of itself to, you know, anyways. If the network is too slow, the listener will hear an annoying echo. However, T-Mobile's 5G network was fast enough to beat the sound waves to the audience. And the Mixalo app actually had to delay the audio from hitting people's ears so that it was in sync with the music coming from the loudspeakers. Okay, so I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, the audio was actually too fast, which means whatever that 5G application was, you know, this this Mixalo app, it has to put them in sync at the right time, right? So align them together. So if the music is coming in too quickly, it would have to kind of make it wait, I suppose, or kind of put it in queue until it's time for it to be heard. And unbeknownst to the audience, this was an excellent way to showcase our edge computing capability over 5G as we installed the Mixalo server at our edge to enable even faster response times. I like what I'm hearing here. I like what I what I see. This is a pretty cool. It says here, the experience for listeners was great. People nearby by the attending concert heard nothing. I guess you could call it a silent 5G concert. All right, good stuff. Very nice, because they did it all over earbuds. All right, for this type of thing, you obviously need... Uh, Fast speed, lots of bandwidth and stuff. Uh, the latency is really important. It's got to be fast enough. And, and actually, in this instance, so fast, they actually had to slow it down. Uh, for those of you that know who John Saw is, the former CTO of Sprint, he's kind of like one of the origin employees of Clearwire, uh, which predates Sprint. But this is the, the whole 2.5 gigahertz spectrum story for T-Mobile. So that's kind of like where the roots of all this comes from. He's kind of the mastermind of the whole like N41, 2.5 gigahertz and all of that. Uh, now, this is funny. Now, if only making voice phone calls using 5G voice over new radio, Voner, were as easy as this mix feed. That's interesting because you would think, you know, calling would be national, the voice over NR calling and everybody would have it that has a voice over NR capable phone. Uh, but it's like regional and in testing and localized markets and stuff. It's interesting. They could do something like this, but they can't do Voner. All right, anyways, uh, comment down below your guys' thoughts on this. This is a pretty cool uh, application like what I see there. All right, Verizon News. Promises ORAN deployment definitely by 2023. All right, so ORAN, or Open Radio Access Networking, uh, this whole concept of ORAN is the fact that you could use, in principle, any vendor, OEM manufacturer of radio equipment, and it would all work together, you know. So Verizon has said that they're going to do this now next year, definitely. So that gives you a definitive time frame. AT and T, I think, is going to probably be around the same time frame as well. Uh, T Mobile's a little bit more bearish on this, I suppose, would be a good term for this. 
Adam uh, Keepy, Kopi, Verizon's SVP of Network Technology Strategy, Architecture, and Planning, made the comments at the 8th Annual Cowan Communications Infrastructure Summit, according to the summary of the event provided by the financial analyst firm. All right, so when speaking about this, they must feel pretty good about the developments. Uh, the thing about Open RAN that's an advantage to a company like Verizon is the fact that you can leverage and utilize any manufacturer or vendor of radio gear, and it can all talk to each other, and it all works with 5G network cores, and it reduces the cost of operation because you could always leverage uh, whoever is giving you the best price for equipment. And this makes a lot of sense for a company to invest in this type of uh, an infrastructure to save money in the long term and short term, for, for sure, definitely. Uh, there's degrees of open RAN, obviously. Uh, but we got to kind of see how this plays out. I know Dish has made it a point to explain how they're doing ORAN and how it's going to give them an edge in how they can sell their network for cheaper because it costs them less to build and operate. Uh, but I think the the takeaway here is the fact that they're giving us a time frame. You know, um, this is obviously good for the operational cost, their OPEX and their CAPEX, and it should reduce that in the long term, should be pretty uh, noticeable savings. Uh, but, and the money that these companies can save on the RAN equipment is money that they can use to buy more RAN equipment and deploy. Uh, and five, the thing about 5G is you need density, right? So they're going to have to install a ton of CRAN and small cells and you know lots of nodes for 5g and stuff so they're they're looking for every single way they can possibly squeeze or get extra squeezes out of the lemon as they say all right so good stuff that's our time frame verizon oran definitely next year uh, and when they don't give you a time frame like in terms of like a quarter or something this is definitely not q1 it's definitely not q2 it's going to be the back half of the year so it's definitely going to be after the summer next year for sure in fact you can almost slam dunk right almost uh q4 is probably pretty likely comment on the verizon oran uh piece and then comment on the t-mobile 5g application concert demo piece very cool stuff here today's video if you appreciated it like this video share it and subscribe for more and turn on the bell notifications to never miss an upload links in the description for my twitter my gmail for all business inquiries and my patreon page if you want to support us and get early access to content exclusive videos not found anywhere else thanks for watching see you on the next one Peace.